Good morning. Why don't you put your hands together and praise the Lord? Come on, that was cool to for me, but praise the name of our Lord. Come on, open up your mouth in this place and praise the name of God. Come on, let me do it. Fill this atmosphere with praise. Come on, let God know that you honor him, you appreciate him, that you adore him. St. Matthew Baptist Church, where the apostle, our pastor, is Apostle Dr. Adrian Weeks. Come on, give God a praise. Thank God for Lady Weeks. Thank God for Pastor Dr. Adrian Weeks. Thank God for Jesus in here. I like good church, so good church means a loud church. So let's stand up in here and give God the best praise that you so grateful that his mercy endures forever. Listen, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for being the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you for being our joy. Thank you for being our strength. And Father, we thank you like never before that how you shall move by your spirit. You shall move by your anointing. You shall move by your power. You shall move by your grace. Father, I thank you that those that are online, I thank you for those that are in this building, that Father, in spite of what we're facing, God, we know that you are you are strength, you are help, you are our hope. And so because we lean on you, we depend on you, we stand in your word, we thank you that your word should never fail. And so today we declare with our, with our lips and in our hearts that we know that you shall bring us even out of this. And we don't have to wait till the battle's over, but God, we can praise you in advance right now. For we thank you that the struggle is almost over. We thank you that the Redeemer of the Lord should say so. And you will deliver us and snatch us out of the hands of the enemy. And we thank you that victory shall be ours. And so we give you glory. Come on, we give you glory. 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 And we give you praise. For it is in Jesus' name we thank you. Thank God. Amen. Now we don't want you to sit there if you're at home, wherever you are. Do what you gotta do and participate in this time of worship. At this time, this great praise and worship team will turn to the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is this okay if we take it back to church?
come on your 2020. Yes. Pastor yes. Russell yes. singing, I gotta wait. Yes. Hey! Yes. Hey! Yes. Hey! Yes. Thank you, Lord. There are some of you that the devil has spoken to you. Uh -huh. Told you you wouldn't have gotten to this man. But he is alive in you. Yeah. And God wants to take you far. Yeah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, God, for life. Help us yeah. to strike you. Thank you for the ability to be here on this last Sunday. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. God, we thank you. Thankful, God. Thank you God. didn't have to do this, but you did. Yes. Oh, that's your name. That's your name, God. You have to give us air in our lungs this morning. Yes. Yeah. 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 We did not have yeah. to let our hearts beat in the rhythm that yes. you decided. Yes. But you did. Yes. Yes. This God, we don't have to be taught. That's your name, sir. Hallelujah. This God, we just want to give you thanks. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Honor, because when we think of the goodness of Jesus, yes. 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 All the things that you've done, God. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. when our mouths don't feel like it, our souls cry out. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a blessing. Hallelujah. Right now, God, in this prayer, we speak healing over the lives of oh, yeah. yes. those that are connected to the hem of your garment, God. Heal them immediately right now. Anxiety, you have to go. Depression, yes, sir. you have to flee. Suicidal thoughts yes, have to be eradicated, right? Yes, sir. Because you are the God that allows us to get away. God, we thank you. We lift you up and we magnify your holy name. God, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be worshipped. We owe you the fruit of our oh, lips. Right now, right where you are, where you just love on God with the best language that you have. Just begin to talk to him in the best manner that you know how in your language is. Your own speech and your diction, dialect, your own vernacular. Just tell God, thank you for what he's done for you. This is the secret place that the enemy cannot find. When he was cast out of the garden, he was evicted out of this place when he was kicked out of heaven. But you have access to worship through the blood of Jesus Christ. In this moment, I dare you to find that place. Again, to tell him thank you. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta tell him what you did. You just gotta tell him thank you for who he is. Magnify your holy name. You are worthy. Thank you, God. You're worthy to be praised, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We love you so much, God. We love you so much, God. Thank you, God. We love you so much, God. We love you so much, God. Thank you for loving us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. You look at somebody next to you and say, I love the Lord. 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 Listen, I want to make some announcements before I go into the text. We will be having watch night service here at the St. Matthew Baptist Church on December 31st at 1030. I want to tell you that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me as I was, uh, I'm not one of those people that does things, does things out of tradition, so be afraid of As I was getting dressed this morning, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about occupation, about occupation and promises and praise. He did not give me a slogan for 2021. He just simply said to remind the people that I am God and God all by myself. He did not give me a prophetic utterance on what is going to occur in 2021. He just simply told me to remind the people that he is God and besides him there is no other. So yeah. yeah. watch Mike join us here at the St. Matthew Baptist Church. We're going to start at 1030. It's going to be a night of praise. It's going to be a night of prayer. It's going to be a night of promise. 
And we're going to believe God that no matter what we face when the clock strikes midnight, yeah. we will be okay. Yes. Because we serve a God that's more powerful than we can Meet us. Meet us in the same Matthew Baptist Church. Listen, my assignment on this last Sunday in the year 2020 is very tumultuous. Yeah. This year of unprecedented uncertainty uh, is nestled in the third epistle of John. John, third John. Not the Gospel of John. Third John, chapter one. Third John, chapter one. Amen. Third John, and I say chapter one, it's the only chapter in this particular portion of the curriculum. I'm going to do my best to teach a little bit. Sit down and have such an awesome praise and worship service. We thank God for the praise team, and y'all give it up. Amen. for the Baptist church, maybe this side of town. Dr. Derek Mercer for opening us up this morning. Pastor Andrew.
some of the same issues. Uh, one of the things that we never really addressed, but we covered for decades, is spirits that are in the church. Say so. Uh, oh literally, literally, are demonic spirits so. that are in the church, and we have learned how to cover them up and still function as if everything is going according to plan. Uh, we don't want to deal with certain things yes, within no. the church as long as the people are coming and we're having good praise breaks. We don't want to deal with the fact that there are issues within the church that we fail to deal with. Even as I counsel pastors, I'm finding that you can preach, but you got mental health issues. Uh, uh, you can shout, but you don't know how to keep your marriage together. You, you can praise, but you've got children who don't even believe in the God that you preach about. There are issues that are going on in the church. Yeah. 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 And the season for us to act as if they're operating covertly is over. The season for us to dance about it is over with. So, so. God is looking for a righteous institution of individuals that can speak to demonic principalities and evict them from wherever they are. These problems that we have in the church ain't nothing new. Mm -hmm. My mother was here, she would tell me that ain't is not proper grammar. But I must say that ain't is the only conjunction that I feel like using in this portion of my conveyance. That, that these issues not the first time it's hitting the church. Yeah. Amen. This, was the, right. this was the initial establishment of the apostles. See, Dr. Mercer, a lot of people think that I'm an anti-denominationalist. I'm not an anti-denominationalist as much as I just don't worship tradition. Yeah. I believe that tradition is frozen success. That's right. And there are a lot of people who died with the gifts on the inside of them mm -hmm. simply because their denomination would not let them come forth and minister like they should. Right. And so if I want my church to be successful, I need to study the original church in its capacity and its needs yeah, yeah. and implement in today's society what they had to face. Yeah. This, this Dr. Weeks is what leads me to this letter that John writes to, to these individuals. Now you have to understand that John is not just writing this apostolic letter to the church, but in this letter, in its entirety, he addresses three individuals who represent three spirits. Uh, when you read the text carefully, you will see that he's writing the letter, and I'm going to use this in a different chronological order for the sake of this sermon. He's writing it to a man named Diotrephus, a man named Demetrius, and a man named Gaius. Now, when you read the text carefully, you will realize that Diotrephus is a representation of a rebellious spirit in the church. He, he is an individual that rejects the teachings of his apostolic father simply because he wants to build a platform for himself in the church. Now, now I don't know about y'all and, and the churches you attend or, or, or preach at, but I know in every single church, there are people that don't come to church to glorify God. They come to church to be glorified themselves. Yeah. And so if the music isn't to their liking, if the microphone is not set where they are, or if they don't get the opportunity to preach, they don't like the institution because they're not there to glorify God. They're there to be glorified themselves. Yeah. The atrophies Dr. Mercer has this issue simply because in, in John's initial letters to the church, he rejected them. I, I, I want to say something that is so interesting when I was studying for this, I had to, read, I had to delve deep into my own situations and psychological discourses about this particular entity and dealing with this particular spirit. It made me come to the conclusion uh, that there is nothing more dangerous in the life of a pastor as a man that comes into your life disguised as a son, yes. but leaves like an enemy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, some of you, the reason why your life is completely in shambles and this past Christmas was one that left you depressed is because people came in your life disguised as a gift but left as a curse. Oh, y'all don't really want to get real about it. You really don't want to get real about it. There are some people who tug at your heartstrings, but they are polluting your mind. They, they, they tug at your heartstrings, but they have, they have invaded the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the medulla oblongata, and they have you think in ways that are not God. We deal with this as leaders, Dr. Weeks, where people come into your life and they will take your best and leave and size with people who talk bad about you. I tried to 
diagnosed Diotrephes and tried to figure out what was it about him that made him talk bad about his apostle, his spiritual father. What made him talk bad about the man? And part of it, Dr. Weeks, has to do with 80% of it that he had a personality flaw. You know, some people just don't get the hugs that they want as children, and they come to church and expect all of those different things. But then the other 20% of this is the fact that you have to be careful. Oh, Jesus, I, I feel something. Remember, Pastor Russell just shouted you. I want you to think. Here it is. You've got to be careful being around people who can't stand your leaders. You have to be careful. That's it. You have to be careful around people. Hanging around people who can't stand your leaders. Because they have they have made a conscious decision. They are entrenched in a position that they dislike who God has called you to serve. So the real problem, Lady Andrews, is when you get close to your leader, you are wearing some of the mess in the, of the places that you just been. In other words, the devil is attacking your leader through you because you've been in the presence of people who can't stand your leader. And now you're in the presence of your leader and in the midst of something that's making them sick. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard a young preacher say the other day, I shared it on social media, and it's so true, and I want to use it in injection, uh, inject it into this portion of the introduction. Right. Judas was given a high position by Jesus. Yeah. But then Judas, check this out, start hanging around people who could not stand Jesus yeah. and ultimately betrayed our Lord and Savior. Yeah. Could you have the same spirit as Biotrophies and you are hanging around people who badmouth who you're connected to? Yeah. 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 The danger in all of that is out of the mouth of your man or woman of God comes the pathway to your breakthrough. Yes. And now because I'm hanging around people that don't like you, parts of me don't like you, and now what you're saying, I can't receive properly and my business Jesus. don't grow like it's supposed to. Yes. Now my father told me a long time ago, you either influence society or society influences you. Yes. 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 So the autophys is one that is arrogant self-centered and believes in his own platform, but I believe that 80% of him connected to something that did not agree with the apostolic writings of John. Mm. Amen. Okay, you don't you ain't caught it yet, so let me step out of the academician role and put it in 21st century okay. 21st century African American colloquialism. Girl, why are you going to the man? Uh, 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 why, why you hanging with them? Uh, uh, why y'all always down there at the church? Well, why you giving like that? Why you? But they don't look at the fact that you riding better than you've ever ruled. They don't look at the fact that you're the limit of the street. They don't look at the fact that you're the biggest Like John. Mm -hmm. 
Lord. is the part we don't discuss. Mm -hmm. yep. The part that we don't discuss, our brother Trey, the part that we don't discuss is this, that there are pastors who love you so much that when you leave, you take a portion of their heart. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. This is why, Dr. Mercer, I said to you that there's an anointing on your life uh, to minister, to preach. Because there are preachers literally preaching before congregations yeah. and are afraid to open themselves up because they don't know that you're going to leave. You may leave any day now and take a part of me and I'm tired gotcha. of laying in the bed depressed about giving myself to people yeah. Yeah. who can take parts of me. Yeah. I'm speaking online right now to about 25 pastors. There's some people that's left you in 2020 that took portions of your heart, but God is a restorer of yes, it. Yes, he is. Yeah. God is a restorer yes, is. of things. And could it be the reason why they left is because they were in the way of growth. They were impeding the flow of things within your church. Could it be that the reason why blood is not flowing to certain organs within your church is because that person was a clot. And in order for it to grow, God had to remove it. Yeah. Okay, Reese, okay, I know you're trying to preach to these people and teach them children that you're ashamed of cardiologists. Let's make it leap into their own personal lives. In order for God, in order for God to fix some things yeah. in your life, he's got to remove some people. Uh, can you catch this? In order for God to fix some things in your life, he's got to remove some diatrophy. Okay. Yeah, right. That's right. Mm. Now, see, the problem with us today is we don't recognize spirit, we don't recognize people. Can I, talk, can I teach you a little bit? I'm, I'm yeah. Y'all have been preaching about Delilah for years as if she was a woman. A uh, Delilah was a spirit before it invaded the woman. And some of you ladies, the problem in your life is the man in your life is Delilah. Your hair is down to your neck and uh, down to your, your shoulders in the natural. But in the supernatural, your ball. Yes, 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 the night you lay down, somebody is cutting your yes, 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 yes. You no longer have the strength that you had before. You can't maintain like you used to because what you lay down with as a demonic assignment to cut things. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Oh, yeah. mm. Help us, y'all. So let's step outside. Paul, Paul, excuse me, John recognizes that he's not just dealing with three sons in ministry, he's dealing with three spirits. Okay. Now, Arthur's represents the first spirit. It is the spirit of rebellion that rises up in organizational leadership. Mm -hmm. There are those of you who are leaders of certain organizations, and there will be somebody who comes into a perfectly developed system and find issues with right. it. Uh -huh. You have to always be careful of people who come into your life disguised as better, but trying to inject rebellion. Uh -huh. I come into your life, but I'm looking at everything that's wrong initially. Uh -huh. And then I begin to pull audiences together. And I begin to say, I don't know why he does this. Well, I don't know why he's doing that. Or if I was you, I would be doing that. Well, you know you're too anointed to be doing this. And what you are, I know, let me help you out right now. You are not are anointed to listen. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't want to deal with this too much. I'm making me deal with a spirit real quick. And so the people who come into your church, Dr. Weeks, and they said, well, I don't understand why he will never let you preach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I keep bringing up Dr. Mercer and Pastor Andrews because they're two of, the, two of the great theologians that I know. I had great conversations with them. And Dr. Mercer was saying something to me about when he came aboard at the MAC. He said something to one of his mentees. He said, you know, it's time for you to see me die or something. I'm going to fall right here and teach this. Oh, yeah. Part of the reason why nobody is following you is yes. because you're not following somebody. Right. And the spirit right. of submission does not flow from you. And the things that need to submit to you can't submit to you. This is why your children back talk you. Because they see you back talking leadership. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Follow me, don't let me lose you, please. That's good. 
Now, I'll tell you, because the spirit of rebellion that comes into organizations and has the whole idea and authority to usurp leadership. Mm-hmm. Always has a better theology, but look at this, and I'm going to teach you how to spot this guy in the spirit, and then I'm going to move on, ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, they talk a good game. Yeah. yeah. All right, now. Yes, they but their resume does not support what they say. Come on. All right. Say it again. Buddy. In other words, what they're saying Kiss the king, what they're saying does not support what they've done. Uh-huh. And you have got to stop following unproven leadership. That's uh-huh. Unproven. Uh-huh. Just because they got a Facebook page uh-huh. and they are copying leaders that they hit everywhere else, 2021 is not going to be a season for you to fake leadership or following people who are practicing. Gotta get a position behind what is proven. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's real Because that storm that we've been singing about is over the ocean. Mm-hmm. It's here now. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful that you're, you're not dealing with people. You're not following people within your church. And, and let me say this. God, Lee, I'm trying to move on, but I believe I'm helping somebody. As you're in the sanctuary watching us on our cyber campus, there, there are people in your congregation that pastor clicks in your church, and you cannot Come be afraid on. to bust up clicks in this yeah. thing. Yeah. God did not you to be popular. He called you to, he called you to convey his word. Yeah. And you can tell it, Pastor. You can tell it. All you got to do is say the benediction and stand in your pulpit for five minutes and watch who gravitates to who. That's it. That's it. That's good. You can tell what needs to be. You can broken. tell. Yeah. Yes. Diotrephes has this problem. Uh, he, he, he overlooks the writings of John. He overlooks the writings of John and develops a platform for himself mm-hmm. and decides uh, that I'm a little bit bigger than the man who laid hands. Yeah, right. Isn't that interesting? Uh, I, I want to park right here. Gosh, I feel this. I just want to leave this out here. The true testament of your submission is serving somebody that you may be greater than. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the true yeah. testament of your submission is serving somebody that you may have greater potential than they do. You may have a greater trajectory in life than they do, but God did not call you to assess what they had. He Come told on. you to submit for that season. Yes. 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 So Diotrephes has an issue. He feels like he's more powerful than John. He feels like he should be more apostolic than John. He's got more issues than John. And so the first spirit that we find the man of God addressing is this, this diatrophian spirit. Mm-hmm. That has invaded not just in the early first century church, it's in this church or every other church in the world. Yes, it is. Amen, amen. There will always be somebody who comes into the room that feels as if I am better suited mm-hmm. for leadership than the leader. Oh, yeah, and most sister. of the time, they will be remarkably gifted. Right. So, congregation, if this is not the season for you to follow gifts, oh, all right. right. Come on. Well said. Satan was gifted. Yes, he was. This yes, is he the did. season for you to submit who God told you to submit to. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. If we continue looking at this myth, myth this epilogue that John writes to, to the church, he, he not only deals with Diotrephes, he deals with a young man who's a son of his named Demetrius. Mm-hmm. Uh, Demetrius, uh, 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 Brother Bannister, Demetrius is a remarkably inter- interesting individual because he's somebody who can preach. Mm-hmm. Uh, the text tells us that he's a preacher. He's a man of good report. All men say good things about him. He's a man of truth. He's a man that can preach. Yes. But the issue with Demetrius is he can preach it, Come on. but he can't walk it. Yeah. And so Paul problem today in modern churches is we have the best preachers, prognosticators, and conveyors of the gospel yeah, in the entire universe. But nobody's getting healed, delivered, or set free. Yeah. 2021 is not the year that people want to hear how well you speak. They want to know what God can do. Yeah. Yeah. So if I come Jesus. into the sanctuary with cancer, yes. Come on. Heart disease. Mm-hmm. I come into the sanctuary with blind and doctor says, Come on. 
They can't do anything. Yeah. I know he's all right. Won't he do it? And I, 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 I won't help that. Yeah. I know that's right. People of God want to see God in full yes. manifestation. Yes. I want to announce to this church and all of society that God himself Jesus. is getting ready to walk through the land in such a capacity that he's going to show everybody who he is with. Yes. You don't have to fight any more battles in this season. You don't have to go on a public relations campaign to tell everybody who you are and what you are not. Let them bad mouth you, but when people see the power that you walk in. Quit worrying about who likes you and who doesn't like you. Me, Chris, be preach it. Yeah. I was on the phone with a well-renowned pastor who, who was on the TV show Preachers of L.A. And he and I had about a 30-minute conversation, Dr. Weeks and I, when we were all on a conference call, we were talking, and he said to me, I've preached 264 days of this past year traveling all over the world. I've been on the continent of Africa and in different places. And he says, America has the greatest preachers in the world, but there's no manifestation of power. Uh -huh. all right, and right. that is the reason why there's no thirst in the church That's anymore. Right. Jesus. Uh, when you look at crusades on the continent of Africa, thousands of people show up to hear a word from the man of God and they get there two hours early. Yeah. You think you're doing your pastor justice by being there on time. And part of the reason why there's not a thirst in the body of Christ anymore because people are tired of hearing what you say. They want to see what God is going to do. Yeah. Demetrius is a preacher. He has a wall. But if you look in the early introductions of this particular letter, Elder Mills, if you look into the entrails of introductions, you will find something that's actually cleverly hidden in the writing. You have to be somebody who's looking at it with a first century eye versus the 21st century version yes. of the way we study. Yes. You have to look yes. at it because even when you study the text, one of the most important things in the text is the law of first mention. Meaning what it is mentioned first has an intention in the text. Yes. John opens up the text not speaking to Demetrius. He opens up the text, not speaking to God. He opens up the text, speaking to Gaius. Yes. Gaius is explained to us the Come same on. way Demetrius is. Uh, the text tells us that, that, that he's somebody, he's somebody uh, 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 who testifies in truth. He, he testifies in truth, meaning that he walks around and he preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. He preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ. He has a good report among all men. Yes. Yes. Everybody says it. That's the same thing they said about Demetrius. Uh -huh. But what separates Gaius from Demetrius, Apostle Weeks, I'm glad you asked rhetorically. It is, it is the last verse in verse, it is the last phrase in verse 3. It says, as even as thou walkest in truth. And so what John is saying, you don't just preach it, Gaius. You walk with your preaching. And so that's what I need in today. I don't need people who just verbalize it. I need people who walk in this land as well. Who just tell me God is a healer. Lay hands on the sick that they may walk. Walk in the truth. It is because, it is because, please follow me, walk with me. It is because Gaius is a true son of the apostle. Wait, I'm going to go ahead and say it because i got sons all over the go. Quit saying you my son and don't walk in what I walk in. Quit saying you my son and you don't walk in what I walk in because it makes me look like an unfit parent. Uh -huh. Step out of theologian role, Bishop. Apostle step out of being an academician and put it on Jerry Springer when I was in college. Okay, okay. All right. I remember when I was in college uh, in writing school, one of the biggest phenomena was the Jerry Springer show. Uh -huh. Jerry Springer was the former mayor of Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, he had gotten into some, some issues legally and found himself now on the talk show called the Jerry Springer show. Mm -hmm. and Jerry Springer was known for two things. People getting in fights on stage. Uh -huh. yes. And people having issues about who the baby was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, people literally at the college that I attended at that time would set their class schedules <laughs> around the Jerry Springer show. It was that big of a phenomenon. He was learned people. 
watching foolishness on TV. Uh -huh. And every once in a while, when they weren't fighting, there was a mom on there that swore up and down that that man was her baby dad. I'm not going to get into the other men that they tested it when they found out it wouldn't work. She was crying, run off. I'm not going to get into that. What I would get in is, is she would every once in a while hold up the picture of the baby uh -huh. close to the picture of the father. And she would say, see, they look alike. Uh -huh. And the look was the proof that the man was the father. And the problem with us today is there are people that possess, profess to come from our spiritual loins that do not look come like on, that's us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you false prophets. You're a false prophet. You're a false apostle. You, you swear up and down. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, don't, don't use my name anymore. I'm too old for that now. Come on now. Come on. And so Paul, excuse me, John has an affinity. He has a heart connection to Gaius. Yes. Because Gaius does not just preach it. He walks it. Come on now. In the same apostolic authority as his father. Yes. Y'all yeah. have to understand how powerful this is. When Peter and John are walking down the street, they literally drug people out of the street that they may, their shadow may hit them, that they may be healed. Yes. 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 Now, the question that I have before I go into what I really want to talk about today is if God is the same God, same God. today, tomorrow, and forevermore, he never changes, explain to me why they had power and we don't. Come on, God. Could it be that we are caught up in our brand more than we are caught up in his? Could it be that we want to market ourselves more than we want to market him? Could it be that we are walking in our own voice and not the authority of his and the people of God are thirsty for a miracle? As I'm speaking right now, there's some of you right now that God is performing a miracle in your heart, soul, and mind right now. How I know he did it for me, and God is not a respecter of persons. But I believe that you open up your heart and your mind and say, God, I receive this in me. God will move on your behalf. But if you're sitting there waiting to be entertained, yes, sir. Right, Lord. you will miss the miracle. I'm going to go ahead and say this because I'm mad enough to say it. I know African-American preachers in our preaching style. Mm -hmm. And however the Lord anoints you to preach, preach that way. That's right. You know, don't, don't try to be anything else because God won't pour oil on who you pretend to be. Because yes, God, oil only finds authenticity. That's okay, it. that's the reason why oil skipped David's brothers and found him. Because oil only pours oh, in yeah. authenticity. And the reason why oil is missing you is because you're trying to preach like Bishop Jenks. It's going to be you. But I know African American preachers that have been preaching to their clothes sweat. And Joe Osteen comes out on stage and never breaks a sweat. And thousands of people are listening. Because the people are not wanting to be entertained in this season. Right. They're wanting to be fed. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Gaius. Yes. Please, y'all. I got, I got a long way to go a short time to get there. Gaius has to have mm -hmm. the heart strings of the apostle. Yes. yes. Because he is mentioned first. Mm -hmm. Even though in my conveyance, I did this in reverse chronological order, John writes to Gaius. John says, not only are you preaching in this thing, but you're walking in it as well. It is because Gaius preaches and walks in it. John releases to him what God wants to do in his life. He says, check this out. Mm. He says, beloved, mm -hmm. I wish above all things mm -hmm. that they thou may prosper. Mm -hmm. Now, now I want to deal with this, Sheikha. I, I, I really want to deal with this because people kind of get upset with Dr. Weeks and I because we're successful in business and things of that nature. And there is a demonic, I need you all to understand this. There is a demonic release of information that is false on the world. Mm -hmm. That release is that God desires you to be poor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is not 
the will of God for your life. If you don't catch anything I say in these last this last Sunday of 2020, you got to catch these next three points, and we're going to begin with something that's remarkably controversial. I need you to lay hands on yourself and say something. I believe. I believe. Say it out loud. I believe. I believe that God, that God, God wants me, wants me to, be rich. to be rich. All right. All right. All right. Listen. Listen. I, I believe. I know because when we look at the word prosperous in the Webster's Dictionary, we find that prosperity or prosperous natures begins and believes in this, that one is financially and materialistically well off. Okay, thank you. That one is financially and materialistically well off. Now, now, there are people who believe in everything else, but when we start talking about Christians getting rich, they yeah. have a problem with it. Yeah. 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 They got a problem. I'm so glad that God wants me to be wealthy here. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Last night, as I was preparing this sermon, I took a break, because sometimes the text gets so good, I have to step back from it, Sheikha, and I have to take a break, yeah, and I go back into it, because it gets so good, it's speaking to me at such a capacity that, that my spirit is in one place, but my mind, and my, I can't guess, so I step back from it and walk away for 30 minutes or so. Yeah. And I sat down, I started looking at YouTube. And you know what I was doing on YouTube? Uh -huh. Pricing private jets. I hear you. Now, now you're trying to figure out what he was doing that for. Because I got to have something that takes me from Miami to Seattle in four hours. I need to, because God has called me to carry the gospel in different places. And I didn't even look at the price tag. I looked at what I liked. Good grain, white leather, things, silver, gold. See, why have I got to start a God that has everything? You have to understand this thing. Now, now i got to deal with this. I'm going to deal with it from a spiritual standpoint. Then I'm going to deal with it from a cultural and societal standpoint. Man. Here's, here, here's, here's the spiritual standpoint. Um, who? Why would I want to follow you? If you look like what you preach don't work for you. Why would I want to follow you if you look like what you preach doesn't work? And so one of the things you have to understand is that what I preach works for me. Cursed people, catch this out, right? She can you talk the point. Cursed people will always think when you're testifying that you're bragging. If you go buy a Maybach, they don't remember when you were catching the bus. And so if I tell somebody, look what God has done, I'm not bragging. I'm actually attracting people to God by walking in his wealth. So actually me walking in prosperity is an evangelism too. Y'all all right? God doesn't just want to send you back to school so you can have a degree. He wants to bless you. So that is the societal aspect of it. The cultural aspect of it. And I may get in trouble for this, but, but I'm okay. The cultural aspect of it is this. My people, black people, my people, African Americans, came to the United States in the belly of slave ships through the Middle Passage. Those that did not die were subject, subject to slavery in a colonial society through the South. 
We were whipped, put in chains, and we were worked unto death. Yeah, the truth. My Lord. Four hundred years later, come on, come on now. We see somebody who looks like us, uh -huh. who's not the descendant of a slave, his wife is, uh -huh. who's sitting in the White House. Uh -huh. yes, Some of you work jobs that your ancestors' with minds would be blown off of. Yes. I saw a t-shirt the other day that said, I'm the answer to my ancestors' prayer. Yes. Yes. And we're going to think about this as a theologian. I said, well, you know what, God? This prosperity thing got some meat to it. Uh -huh. Yes. Because my great great grandfather's name wasn't Rockefeller. Come on. My great great grandfather's name was not Trump. Right. My great great grandfather's name was not Kennedy. Mm -hmm. My great great grandfather was a slave. Uh -huh. So, in order for you to level the playing field in, order. Come on, come on, in this capitalistic society in which others are ahead of me, uh -huh. in order for me to achieve the wealth that they achieve, uh -huh. in order for me to catch up to where they catch up with uh -huh. does not always mean me going to Harvard. Uh -huh. It means a supernatural uh -huh. release yes. from you. Y'all been catching this. It's better if y'all been catching this. So what God can do yes. with one release yes. is put me ahead of people who had my ancestors yes. enslaved. Children in here that lay hands on your children and say, Our ancestors 
statement in six weeks. If there was CNN back in the time of Pharaoh, when Moses came through with the plague, the news would look just like it does right now. Yes, yes. Yes. But for the people in Goshen, yes. mm -hmm. yes. it was a turnover, it was a release. Yes, sir. And so you have got to stop watching CNN and accepting their faith yes. and start believing. Yeah, yes. It says, uh, uh, that thou may prosper. Yes, uh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Be in good health. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, uh, Evangelist Baptist, this is the first time where we see the introduction of holistic ministry. Mm -hmm. We see the introduction of holistic ministry because God does not just want you rich, He wants, he wants you to enjoy your rest. Yes. 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 So you have to understand that health means that we have to. I might as well teach a class in African American history. Uh, we, we have to understand that we are genetically a displaced people. Uh, so there are things in this society that we cannot accept. Uh, there are medical studies that tell us that you need to go get a colonoscopy man at 50. When we find African American men are dying of colon cancer at 30. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and so what we have to understand is that we are a displaced people. Yeah. We were not genetically designed for this region of the world. Uh -huh. and therefore, we've got to start thinking spiritually more so than medically or even socially. Uh -huh. That means some of the stuff we grew up eating is time to stop eating. Yeah. Uh -huh. It kills your grandma, yeah. it kills your great grandma, and it's got your mama sick. And they keep pumping experimental drugs within us to manage symptoms but not release cure. And so you have got to make a conscious decision. It stops with me. I'm not going to cook all this stuff, put all this salt on it, all this seasoning salt on it, fry it in the lard, all this kind of stuff, then eat it and get high blood pressure or high cholesterol and then say, Lord, heal me, and then go home and do the same thing. It is time for a change of behavior. My child don't like that. Your child don't buy groceries, do they? Being yeah. good at yes, Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but, but, but it's interesting because John speaks to Gaius, his son in ministry, and he uses the terminology, he says, health. Yes. He does not indicate what type of health. Yeah, yeah. So it is safe for us to take a broad stroke with the word yeah. health and assume that he's just not talking about our physical body. That's right. But you got to get healthy. Yes, sir. That's you got to get healthy in your mind. Right. Some of us are shouting in church and holding the abuse yeah. still in our mind. Yeah. And yeah. we come to church for a season or we come to church for a moment and we get dope off of the euphoria of music, good yeah. preaching, and we run and dance, and we forget what we're going through for a moment, and then we go back home, and we're dealing with those mental issues all over again, because our family has been taught to cover it up instead of dealing with it. There's nothing more sad than a successful person with a crazy mind. Yeah. Yeah. You got three master's degrees, you're nice looking, and you can't keep a man. Then you get to the point where you say, I don't need no. Wait a minute, no. No, no, no. You need somebody. You need somebody. Need somebody. Then, then you have the temerity, the unmitigated goal, and say, all men are the same. No, you've been the same in every relationship that you've been in. And you've got the same results. We didn't have to wait to watch night. Why? Going to another year. The same way you are. Everything's on 
this morning. Carrying stuff that wasn't even designed for you to carry. Yeah. Next month, I mean, next year, I'm going to be teaching on the Ark of the Covenant. And one of the things you got to realize is that there's a symbolic gesture within the Ark of the Covenant that teaches that Jesus died not just for our salvation, but he died. He didn't die for your salvation. He got up for your salvation. He died for your sin. But he did. Not only did he die for your sin, but he died for generational curses. Yes, he did. So why are you carrying stuff from generation to generation? You're on your way to heaven, but you're burning down here on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Release yeah. it. You can't get along with your children because you and your father didn't get along. Yeah, yeah. You and your mother didn't get along. And so now you figure this is just how it is. But if you knew it was unhealthy, why are you letting your children see the face of that foolish? They are involved. Good teacher. Prosper, be in good health. Yeah. So he introduces us to us holistic ministries. Mm. Not just physically health. Right. Mm-hmm. But your mind got to be right. Yes. Right. Right. Your mind got to be right. So true. And let's be honest. Because your parents, instead of dealing with your issues, gave you excuses. Mm-hmm. You walk into every relationship saying it's somebody else's fault. Oh, and so instead of admitting that you've been that you hadn't been the best parent, you're blaming the teacher for your child's behavior. Yeah. So every grade we go to is the teacher's fault. Mm-hmm. And they don't like him because he's black. Uh-huh. They don't like him at that school. So I take him out of this school and put him in this school. Yeah. No, baby, it's time for all y'all to sit down yeah. and realize there's some stuff going on that we need to deal with. Yeah. Financial prosperity. It's not just physical health in my body, but also he is discussing that's a mental health aspect. I'm tired of crazy sayings. I know that's right. (laughs) I'm tired of crazy sayings. And if you're not careful, that demonic spirit will allow you to use the text to further fortify your insanity. Yes. Well, I study the Bible, but I only study from the perspectives of fortifying my position, not getting healed. So now I begin to misappropriate scripture in order to show people that I'm okay. Not that I need to be healed. Sad thing about it is we have pulpits that are full of people like that. So they create people that are like them because they use the text to further entrench themselves. And their own proclivities to stay sick. Yes. Then they are. Damn, I deal just a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. right, sir. <laughs> hey, right there. Prosper. Mm-hmm. The sad thing about it all is we got a generation of people mm-hmm. that are sad people that are taking happy pictures on social media. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. All you're doing every five yeah. minutes is checking to see who likes it. Yeah. It's all actuality. Mm-hmm. I need a stranger to make me feel better about myself. Wow. Yeah. I'm successful in business, mm. in my career, mm. but at night I'm alone. Mm. And because I'm so alone, it causes me to make decisions that further vex the heart of God. Mm. Instead of admitting that I need I want to be made whole today. He says to Gaius, not only do I want to see you prosper being good health, he says, Mm -hmm. but even as your soul prospers. This is what shouted me. He says, I want to introduce to you weeks holistic ministry. I just want you financially stable and mentally stable. I want your soul to Right. Now, in order for you to understand where he's going, we've got to take a brief uh, introduction into the anatomy of human beings. We've got to understand yeah. that we are tripartite yeah. beings. Yes. Yes. We come from a tripartite yes. God. Yes. Uh, we were created in the image of God. Yes. Yes. God is both Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three of them, not both. 
He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is so interesting because he's such a God that he can sit on his throne and watch his son die and send his spirit to resurrect him. He's such a God that he can be everywhere in, in all in one time. And so a lot of people have an issue understanding this concept when we live in the United States of America. 50 states make up one country. So if 50 states can make up one country, why can't three beings make up one God? And so if we are created in his own image, then we must be tripartite beings. That we are what? Mind, body, and soul. That's what you're taught from a psychological standpoint, but from a theological standpoint, you are body, spirit, and soul. Your body is the cell in what you carry. Your spirit is the is the junction, the unctions in what you do things. Your soul is what's going to spend eternity with God. Come on. Or eternity in hell. Yeah. So here in the text, he says, I want your soul to prosper. Oh, I begin to delve into the text and say, Lord, well, how does my soul prosper? Mm -hmm. Come on now. How does my soul prosper? He simply said to me, by eating the things that feed your soul. Yes, that's it. Okay. So if I eat health and exercise, come on, come on. my body will be straight. Yeah. I manage my money, tired, do like I'm supposed to. But my soul has to prosper mm -hmm. through the word of God. Yeah. 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 There has to be a daily ingestion of the word of daily. God yeah. daily. that feeds yeah. my soul. Yeah. Not just Sunday, not just on YouTube, but I've got to get into the Word of God. Not to preach, but to be a better person. Yes! And allow it to get into my soul so I may grow in God. Because your soul is equipped with the ability to speak to the other aspects yes. that we discussed. Yes. 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 yes, 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 yes. It is my soul that tells my body we're healthy. Yes. Yes. It is my soul that looks at my finances and says we got more than enough. Yes. But if I never read the word of God, my soul that knows what it says. Yes. 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 So some of you, the reason why your body is not healed and your finances are not where they need to be is because your soul is speaking the language of Facebook. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Need your problem. Yeah. They need to live. Yeah. Yeah. I'm believing God for $3 million right now. Amen. And some of you are saying, Lord, you yeah. ain't talking to me. You're right. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people whose soul know how to fall. Our demons. My soul prospered. My soul prospered by reading the word of God and staying in prayer and making sure that my soul begins to speak a language that is that is uh, um, that is walking with the words that God has already spoke about me. So it doesn't matter what you say to my mind, my soul is speaking to my mind, and now I'm not going crazy based on what you say. Am I talking all right? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, when your soul prospers, it doesn't matter what situation you're in. Right. Can I go in? I'm not going home, but y'all, I'm just going to do what I'm doing. You're all right. You're riding with me. Here it is. Uh, uh, um, when your soul is prospering, it does not matter what situation you're in. It doesn't matter 2021, 2022. I got people worried about 2021 like they ain't thankful for life, health, and strength. I don't care what's coming as long as the Lord let me see it. But when the soul prospers, yes. doesn't matter what situation. Yes. Um, there was a man named Jacob mm -hmm. who wrestled with an angel. Uh -huh. He wrestled with an angel. The angel dislocated his hip. Mm -hmm. He then said, I'm not going to let you go into this hill. To be right. blessed. Some, uh, uh, some interpretations of the text goes a step farther and says, until you bless my soul. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It is at this time that he does not bless him with riches, nor does he heal his body. Mm -hmm. He changes 
his name. <laughs> and he changes his name from Jacob to Israel. Uh, Israel later goes on and has some sons. He has 12 sons. But there is one son by the name of Joseph that he loved more than the others because the boy had favor. Yes. Now he listened to his father. His soul began to prosper and he went into certain situations where his brothers got jealous of the fact that he had a coat on of many colors uh -huh. that came from his father. Follow me y'all. I'm going somewhere. Uh, they decide to rip the coat off of him as if favor was the color. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there's some people that want to take what you have because they think that your materialism is the force of your favor. But the force of my favor is that my soul prospered. They threw him in a pit. They got him out of a pit with him in slavery. When they put him in slavery, the interesting thing for the text is while he's in slavery, favor because his soul prospered, put him over all of the other slaves. While you may not be in the situation but I guarantee you there's some people jealous of your situation because favor puts you over people even in places you don't think about that ain't even happening right now but I feel something and so he gets lied on while he's, he's over the slaves he gets lied on by the woman of the house she says that he assaulted her uh, the man of the house by the name of Potiphar makes the decision to take the boy and put him in jail now you have to understand where favor jumps in right there because Egyptian law says that any foreigner that raised their hand at an Egyptian must be summarily put to death now you have to understand that jo Joseph is a foreigner uh, he is accused of assault but he's not killed he's put in jail and some of y'all got to quit looking at where you are and thank God for where you could have been. You could have been in other situations, but favor kept you from going in those places. Well, while he's in jail, I feel my back is running. Uh -huh. While he's in jail, right. while he's in jail, the text indicates to us that he has favor uh -huh. in the jail cell. Why? Because you may have me behind bars, but you can't stop my soul from prospering. Man. And then so now he's behind the closed doors. He's now in jail and he ministers through the prophetic anointing of interpreting dreams to a butler and a baker. Yeah. He tells the baker, listen, bro, your time is getting short. And so I'm paraphrasing isogenically. The baker dies, but the butler is restored to the hand of Pharaoh. He tells the butler on his way out of jail, he says, when you get to Pharaoh, remember me. Yeah. Remember me. There are some people that you've affected in business and in life that God is putting in high places that when the time is right, they're going to remember your name. So you got to have some people that speak your name in places that you ain't got God in You got to have some people that speak your name in places yeah. that you may not have entered into that room. Yeah. So years go by. Uh -huh. years. Yes. years go by. Somebody say years, years. go by. Pharaoh has a dream. Yes, he did. He has a dream that nobody can interpret. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has a dream that there were seven no, fat no. cows yes. that were grazing in the grass, and then there were seven skinny cows yes. that came and consumed the seven fat cows. Yes. And nobody could interpret the dream. He brought together sorcerers and soothsayers and people who have who believed in Egyptian Palm astrology. Reader. He brought together palm readers and all of this divination to try yes. to interpret the dream. Now check. This time. Yeah. Pharaoh told them the dream. Yeah. And none of them could interpret the dream. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. But the brother said, well, wait a minute, Pharaoh. When I was doing time in the federal penitentiary, yes. there was a man in there that told me what I am. So Pharaoh sent for the boy. Could you imagine that the, the day that excuse me, Joseph is sitting in his cell, and then all of a sudden somebody walks up and says, We gotta get you ready now. Uh, we're going to take you to go see Pharaoh. We're going to cut your hair. We're going to bathe you. We're going to put you on fine for you. Because some of you don't realize you may be in jail, but God is getting you dressed for the next step. Ah! God is getting ready to change your attire because it's getting you dressed for the next level. See, this is why you got to dress for the job you want, not to dress your job that you got. You got to start dressing like the CEO of the company. Ah! Because God is preparing you for the next level. They come and get on Joe out of the jail cell. Remember, he's still Yo. prosperous. His soul 
is prosper. The word of God is down on the inside of him. And no matter what situation that he's in, he's still prospering. Remember, he just yeah. prospered in the jail. Before that, he prospered in slavery. Before that, he should have died in the pit that they put him in. See, some of y'all got to look Come back on. over your life yeah. and think things over. When we excavate the text exchange, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Pharaoh does not tell Joseph dream. his dream. Right. Joseph walks in the room, mm -hmm. and the anointing on the inside, on, coupled with his soul walking in prosperity, yes. quickens in such a capacity that he looks at Pharaoh and says, This is the dream that you had, mm -hmm. and this is what it means. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. God is going to put some of you on the next level and you already have the answer to it. Joseph tells Pharaoh mm -hmm. his dream, mm -hmm. the interpretation of the dream, yes. and how to prepare for what's coming. Mm. Prepares for it in such a capacity. And Pharaoh believes him in such a capacity. Dr. Weeks, that the first thing he does when you study the text and look at it from the original Talmudic version, yes. First thing he does. Whew. The first thing he does is he puts a coat yeah. over him. The very thing that his brothers took from him. Yeah. God wants to restore yes. the things that even people you love took from you in the sin. The coat and he puts it over him and he puts a ring on him and makes him the vice lord, the president, the vice president of all of Egypt. He puts it over the granary, mm -hmm. the economy of all of Egypt in the middle of a famine. He, he puts yeah. him over these yeah. things. Because yeah. yeah. his soul is prosperous. Yeah. Yeah. When your soul prospers, your body and your finances have no, 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 no choice in life. Amen. Right. Yeah. 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 I didn't come to preach about Joseph, I actually came to preach about you. Because we're entering into a season where, where the finances and the favor and the spirit of God is literally going to be evident to the people of God. Amen. And people who lied on you are about to be proven that they're liars. Amen. You don't have to argue about it, you don't have to throw off on social media, you don't have to worry about it. Because if I were to go backwards in the text and go all the way to Genesis, you would find that Joseph's brother showed up during this family. Yeah, 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 yeah. They showed up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did show up. Hallelujah. Jesus. They showed up in this family. Yes. To a man who is now over the economy of a nation. Come on now. Because if my soul prospers, this prospers. Yes. And they show up to him and they don't even recognize Oh, yes. Part of the reason why they don't recognize you today is because they left you for dead. Right. First thing. There's some people who are not going to recognize you in this season because you're going to go from the borrower to the lender. There's some people who are not going to recognize you in this season because they left you renting and now you're going to be owning that. They're not going to recognize you in this season. Because you're in a better shape than you were when they left you. That's part of the reason why they didn't recognize it. The other reason why they didn't recognize it is because he spoke a different language. He wasn't speaking Aramaic. He spoke Egyptian when they saw him again. You get delivered from gossiping, gossip is going to leave you alone. Your doctor is not going to even recognize you anymore because you're no longer speaking deaf. You're speaking. Amen. Amen. You're not even calling the disease by name anymore. Right. You're saying it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And then just paraphrasing, moving quickly, he reveals himself to his brothers. And they thought Joseph now had more power than them 
is going to kill them. But when your soul is in a prosperous Amen. Amen. You don't worry about getting people. I'm going to say something that made me mind blowing. My success is enough revenge. I want to rub it in your face. I want to rub it in your face. My success is enough. But they thought Job was going to kill him. He sits him down at the table and he says, you meant it for evil. What you meant for evil. God turned around for our good. Joseph understood the heart of God because his soul prospered. He understood and came to the conclusion that if I had never been in the field, yes, sir. if I had never been in jail, yes, sir. If I had never been enslaved, yeah. I wouldn't be in a position to feed my family. Yeah. Even in the midst of a family. Yes, sir. John writes to Gaius. God released to Joseph. And I say to you, God wants to prosper you. He wants you to walk in good health. Even as your soul. Thank you, Lord God. No matter what they've said, no matter what you've done, Amen. this is the decision that God has made. Yes. We're standing all over the house, those of you that are watching. I would not go into 2021, this last Sunday in 2020, uncertain. Yes. About where my soul The Bible says, work out your own soul salvation. Teaches us. Yeah. Listen, every head bowed, every eye closed. Those of you that are watching us online, inboxes. You need somebody to lead you to Christ. I've got evangelists, I've got pastors, I've got mission people that are prepared. You may even get Dr. Weeks and I. But all of this is not worth anything. People die and go to hell. Listen, there's somebody in this sanctuary that says, I'm ready for a change to be made in my life. I'm ready for my soul to prosper. I'm ready to walk in the fullness of God. I'm not going to let a new year catch me in the same place that I've been in. I'm not going to wait to watch tonight. I'm going to do it right. If you want to give your life to Christ, you want to join this ministry and you're in the sanctuary, just raise your hand. Raise your hand if you need to give your life to Christ. Now, if you're watching us online and you decide that you want to connect with us from a cyber camp standpoint, just inbox us on social media and say, I want to be a part of this movement called the Mac. We'll embrace you. We'll love you right where you are. And the only thing we ask you to do is walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ as we lead over to the same place. God, we thank you. Listen, if there's anybody that desires prayer, I feel a release on me right now. If you desire prayer, you can come up right now. You can come up right now if you desire prayer. Those of you that are watching from home, we're praying for you. We're believing God for you. We thank God for your healing. We thank God for your deliverance. Thank <laughs> you.